Hi, here we are everybody. We are at the JLC Distant Learning Art Class for all of you at home and I'm happy to see you. We are going to do our next art project um, on Passover. We know Passover is coming in just about uh, three weeks and we all need to get ready and so I thought it would be fun to learn about the story of Passover which many of you know, but you don't know all the details, and I'm always learning every year. There's more and more to learn, so here we go. As you know, I have this, um, always have a great collection of books. Here's one book called Out of Egypt, um, and this book has wonderful illustrations. One of the things I thought it would be fun to do is either do, you have a choice. You can do a painting on a canvas, if you have a canvas and paints at home, or if you have just, you know, regular old, Paper and pen, that works too. Just any old paper and pen or pencils or markers. If you have colored pencils, see, I have a nice set of beautiful colored pencils that I would share with you if we were together. But whatever you have at home, paper, pen, paint, pencils, will all work for this project. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just talk a little bit about the story. Um, I'm gonna do a painting of the splitting of the sea because it's one of my favorite parts, especially when um, when they all cross the sea and the ladies all get out their tambourines, which you can see my beautiful tambourines that I decorated over there for being victorious over the Mitzrim. So um, one of the fun things, I don't know if it's fun in light of the Wuhan Christ, uh, coronavirus, but this, as you know, these kind of plagues are all from Hashem and the Jews were saved, so we don't have to worry. We're all gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be just fine. So I wanna to talk to you about um, some of the plagues. Um, the first one, as you know, blood. So you can do, um, you can do your drawing or your painting in um, cartoon style with little you know, blurbs of what they're saying, or you can just paint the story of the bloody Nile River um, everything turned into blood, even the bathtub. Um, the next plague was the plague of frogs. Um, the frogs are kind of fun to draw, and you could draw lots of them, um, and they were everywhere. And then the next plague is the plague of lice. Now lice, I don't really find fun. I think they're kind of disgusting, and that's, I think, why Hashem sent the plague of lice because everyone was itching and everyone was upset and and uh but even still then Pyro did not let moses take the jews out of israel so what does hashem do he sends the plague of the wild animals now that doesn't scare anybody i don't know what will so one of the things you could do is you can draw pictures of wild animals um all of them or some of them um, the other thing um, that you can do is in the next one, it's a little gory, but um, the livestock disease. Okay, so all the, the, all the cows died and, and the poor she Shepsalas and all the things that belonged only to the midstream. Okay, none of the stock, the, the animals of the Jews, of the Jewish people died. And then... After that, what's the next plague? Does anyone remember? Can you tell me what the next plague is after that? Right, boils. Boils are kind of disgusting. Oops, nope, here it is, boils. I don't know if this is reading backwards for you, but boils are kind of disgusting. You can see that they were all over their body and everyone was in pain and it was very uncomfortable. So even then, Paro did not let the Jews go. So what does Hashem send? Another plague. And this plague is hail. But this hail was not ordinary hail. This hail was filled with fire and ice, which doesn't really occur in nature. So we know it was a miracle from Hashem that he sent this plague. And, and it was crashing down and burning and freezing at the same time. The next plague after that is the plague of locusts. Now, these plagues of locusts actually still exist. These little creatures are, are still exist and they still have them happening in the deserts. 
and they come and they eat everything up and then there's nothing left for any no agriculture for anyone to eat but they were you know the the egyptians weren't not just the the um the plants and, the, and all the food was was attacked the people were attacked by these locusts they were everywhere and people were very very unhappy about that but still paro said no hashem hardened his heart and he said no so hashem tried another plague and that's the plague of darkness now i don't know about you i'm a little scared of the dark i don't like it when i can't see things so i'm sure it was a very scary time for the Mitzrim and um, in in uh, in Mitzrayim to find, and they didn't know, couldn't find their stuff. You know, like where's my iPod? I don't have it. Where's my phone? Can't find it. Um, where's the refrigerator? I can't find my food. They couldn't find anything. So now, if you're gonna do <laughs> if you're gonna do artwork on the darkness, don't just paint a black canvas. Although you could, if that's your if that's your thing, if you think that. That's what makes you feel inspired to um, to make art about that plague. I'm not going to try and direct what your, you as an artist feels, but I would encourage you to show how that the light always shone and will continue to shine on the Jewish people, no matter what. And then Paro still said no. So Hashem said, okay, we're gonna have to do this one final plague that will surely, surely turn Paro's heart and soften it to let the Jewish people go. And what plague was that? Anybody here, the firstborn son? Okay, guess what? Paro was a firstborn. Now, only the Egyptians' firstborns passed away not the Jewish people. So again, these plagues did not hurt the Jewish people. Now, what we can do, I'm going to start painting my painting of the sea, the splitting of the sea. And the way I'm gonna start it, let me move my camera over a little bit so you can see it better. The way I'm gonna do it, um, let's see, can you see this? Hmm. Hi, so here I am. I'm showing you the steps on how to start the painting if you want to do Kriyas Yamsuf. You um, just take some ultramarine blue paint and then you paint in with some red to do the sand. You want to paint the uh, ocean in a dark ultramarine blue using your brush strokes to go in the direction that the waves are going out um, so it looks like the water wall. And then you want to add your white to the crests of the waves so it shows that it's really powerful. And here we're going to come in with some more um, darker, a darker blue. And as you're painting it in, make sure your brush strokes are going up in the direction that the waves are going up, otherwise it won't look like waves going up. Um, we're going to just keep adding in more blue paint and then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, the white again, um, and just paint your wall, your your water wall. So this is the splitting of the sea. Um, you see, I'm adding more of the water. It's very, uh, it's the when the water churns on top, it's very white. And now I'm going to be uh, showing you how we're doing the next part of this after the splitting of the sea. We're going to start with the people. So you want to make your people to be very small in comparison to the size of the water, otherwise it won't look right. So I just take little dabs of white paint and dab them in so that I can paint on top of them any color I want. And uh, you want to make the ones in the front bigger than the ones that are going down, uh, that have already crossed further into the Yamsuf. The further away, the smaller it gets. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in and work a little bit more to finish up getting the, the wall of water. And just want to get all the canvas covered. Don't want to see any of the, the white of the canvas. And here I'm just adding in some more 
um, paint and layers onto the water walls. Make sure you have the right size brush. If you don't have extra brushes, just do the best you can. Um, you want to make the um, you know the bottom of the closer to the ground. You want to make that part darker because that's where it's deeper. And as it gets closer to the surface, it'll be lighter. Okay, so now I'm going to continue working on, there we go, getting my water wall. And that should about do that. And now I want to work on putting the people in, so I'm going to take some a small brush with very small uh, bristles, and I'm going to take some paint, and I'm going to just very... Um, very lightly add some detail. It's not like you're going to see the people's hair or what they're wearing exactly. It's just a little, just a suggestion that there are people going through. That's the, the, the Jews crossing through the Yom Suf. And so, anyway, that's that's how I do it. Just I sped up the video so it'll be faster, but I'm just adding little tiny bits of detail, a little dark against the contrast, against the white, just to give an indication that the, these are people. Um, it's not a lot of detail. But it's just a hint of... I just basically kind of like scribbling a little shape of a person. That's how I do it. But you can try that. Hopefully it'll work for you. And then I want to kind of make the ground a little more um, detailed. So I'm going to mix some more paint. And I'm going to just paint in the sand... Give it a little more depth. I don't want to see the canvas poking through. And I'm just painting around my people. Painting the sand. And it's really just very um, working very quickly. But you can take your time in doing it. Um, I just did it quickly for this video. I'll just keep doing some details, just putting in a little more detail, covering it with a little more paint, and bringing the, the sand edge right up to the water wall. Bring a little more, a little more darker detail. There's 